Welcome back. The Namibia Oil and Gas Conference 2023 took place last week over two days in the capital. Various stakeholders and industry captains were in attendance. The conference, organized by the NIPDP, EAN and Hansedo Foundation, operated under the theme, Leveraging the Oil Discoveries for Inclusive Economic Development. Now joining us for a post-mortem discussion is resident representative of the Hansedo Foundation, Dr. Clemens von Dodre. Doctor, good evening and welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Pleasure is all mine. Doctor, people would say that there's been plenty of uh, discussion and gatherings, you know, concerning the sector. So, to start with, what necessitated yet another uh, conference of this uh, kind? I wouldn't even go as far as that. They have plenty of those conferences or, or gatherings of, of that nature thus far. But I think what makes it different, and I think which makes it very unique globally is the fact that we brought together stakeholders from civil society, from the public sector, from the private sector, from the international arena, experts, global experts in the oil and gas industry, um, but also local economists and, and, and bringing everybody in the room to make sure that we have a sound uh, discussion, a sound engagement, not only for business to business but uh, and decision makers to decision maker, but also bringing in the people on, um, on the ground to bring in civil society representatives who deal with day-to-day -day challenges, um, to bring in the Legal Assistance Center, to bring in the Economic Association of Namibia as one of the hosts, of course, mm -hmm. um, but also, for instance, the Institute for Public Policy Research, one of the top 35 think tanks in Africa, and obviously one of the, the, the think tank here in Namibia. Yeah. And of course, perhaps the next question is, is quite a broad one, and I'm sure you've digested what's happened over the, you know, last week, over the past two days. So what were the key highlights and, and you know, takeaways from, from this conference? Actually, I would like to quote one of the international participants who, who joined us there at the conference. And he said, after the conference, he said to me, you know what, what is really impressive is how mature the discussion here in Namibia is. Mm. How, how much how many people actually here in Namibia already put their heads around this topic and how, you know, to understand the complexity of this, um, you know, developing this new sector. I mean, we're talking about Namibia endeavoring into an entire new industry to become a player uh, on the global market, to become uh, the, one of the top three um, oil and gas suppliers on the continent and one of the top 15 suppliers globally. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those are aspects, you know, which need to be managed properly. There are obviously economic aspects, there are uh, environmental uh, uh, concerns, um, which we hold dearly, given also that our constitution talks to that. Yeah. Um, but also, of course, um, socioeconomic aspects. At the end of the day, uh, we don't want to end up, um, or for f most Namibians would agree with me, I would, I'm sure, uh, that we don't want to end up in a situation where many Angolans and many Nigerians have found themselves that there is this wealth, there is this resource, but at the end of the day, most uh, people in those both two countries actually did not benefit thus yeah. far from yeah. that resource. Interesting or not interesting, maybe apt, of course, theme to this conference, leveraging Namibia's oil discoveries. How do we do that? Well, that's uh, obviously easier said than done. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, there are good examples, um, like, for instance, Norway, where they have introduced a sovereign wealth fund like we are doing here in Namibia as well. And I'm sure, you know, um, the decision makers have been looking at the uh, Norwegian case. Yeah. And I actually have here, uh, the presentation because I couldn't even quote uh, paraphrase that better than what is written there is, is you know, at the end of the day, there are long term, there are lessons we can learn from, from, from the Norwegian region case. There also Guyana is a good example now as a recent country also endeavoring into that, uh, into that oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the main purpose, according to the Norwegians, and I think that holds true also for our case in Namibia is that, um, you want to make sure that inflation is kept in balance, that the economy overall is stable, and that you help to diversify the wealth portfolio, um, also to invest abroad, but also in, within the country, and therefore to make sure that every citizen of this country actually is benefiting from that. Yeah. And uh, Norway's example actually shows you that uh, each Norwegian actually owns a 220,000 US dollar stake in that sovereign wealth fund, therefore, Nobody needs to worry about their retirement. Nobody needs to worry about their, their medical expense. Mm -hmm. They are covered. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, that's how one should also maybe, in my view, also should use uh, the natural resource that it actually benefits everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you know, for business people, those entrepreneurs who want to make money from it, I'm sure there's a place for them as well. But at the end of the day, um, as the Constitution also um, sets out, um, 
One needs to make sure that the resources of the country are being used to benefit today's and tomorrow's generations. Yeah. As it stands now, Namibia has the potential to be, you know, the hub um, when it comes to oil and gas in Africa. What is it that we need to do to ensure that this becomes a reality? Well, um, again, I would like to look at uh, our Norwegian case here also. And I think that a need, there's a need for a holistic approach for socioeconomic development. Mm -hmm. So using the revenue streams, both taxes, um, um, uh, um, royalties and, 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 to make sure that um, at the end of the day, there is a sustainable growth and economic inclusivity for the entire country, for each and every citizen, that investments are being made in infrastructure, in schools, hospitals, and uh, through that also that you know people can more and more engage also in this new industry can become part of that can be player in it yeah. um, and, and uh, develop from there as well. Mm -hmm. The apt governance of the sector will of course be of utmost imperative in ensuring that the socio-economic benefits that we're talking about um, that comes from this really does reach each and every Namibian so what do we need to do on, on the governance front uh, you know to be able to achieve that? Of course, we need a coherent and consistent um, uh, legislative framework to begin with, but obviously at, uh, to the implementation of that framework needs to be also executed properly to avoid, obviously, to or do away with any potential corruption or, or other unethical practices um, to ensure that, you know, um, as a country, as, an, as a government, as the people of Namibia, um, we, we know what is hap happening, that there is a transparent process in place um, also how tenders are being awarded, etc., etc. So all of that needs to come together, but we need to bear in mind that all of that is not a static process. It's a dynamic or it's a process in itself. It's not a fixed system. So, you know, as we go along, as we develop this new sector, this new industry, we will have to learn and adapt. And we'll then have to make sure that, you know, it speaks to the challenges we face. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have to bear in mind that Namibia is not uh, now doing this in isolation that Namibia is part then of the international community, of the business, uh, of the industry, um, the oil and gas industry, and there are other players already in the market. Um, they have already predetermined some of the rules and regulations, how trade is being done, how um, you know, uh, commodities are being transported, and Namibia needs to live up to that and to become a player in that. Yeah. Dr. von Dodre, realistically speaking, does Namibia have the infrastructure, one, and the, the skill to successfully develop, you know, its oil and gas sector? Naturally, no, because we didn't have an oil and gas industry like countries like Nigeria, like Angola. I mean, they've been doing this now for decades. Um, so for us, it's now time to develop all of that. But at the end of the day, uh, what we have a good, we're in a good starting situation now. We, from now on, with the infrastructure we have in place, um, there is plenty of space to develop that. Um, in terms of skill development, I think uh, the universities, also, but also the vocational training centers, need to adapt to the demands of that new industry. So at the end of the day, we need to make sure that the graduates of those different institutions are talking to the demand and that we not just simply produ produce academics for the sake of having academics, mm -hmm. um, but we need engineers, we need people who understand, also civil engineers, we under need, need people who understand the technology, um, energy specialists, and, and, and so that, that demand can be met. Yeah. But in terms of infrastructure, it's also a, a question on, on when do we do what? What are the low-hanging fruits? You know, we have Namport, we have the harbors, we can develop those further to make sure that sort of we, we reach every milestone uh, as we develop this new industry. Because, I mean, uh, most of the oil and gas will be extracted offshore. So we won't see much of that happening on land. But right. still, you need infrastructure on land to work from there. But over time, we might think about a refinery as well to actually refine our oil and gas, um, to use that then for, 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 for our own consumption, but also to export it to our neighboring countries and so on. So those are, I think, it's, it's again, it's not a fixed, rigid system. It's a process, and as we go along, I think uh, things need to be developed. Yeah. So what would then the next steps be, uh, you know, from here on forward? Um, well, uh, the, as far as I understood from this conference, the oil companies working on this, they're still busy with the exploration, and there are some very promising uh, results thus far. Um, but from then on, obviously, the rigs need to be installed, and we need to move from the exploration phase into a extraction phase, uh, we need to set up the infrastructure um, onshore, but also offshore, 
um, and we need to also have our legal framework um, in place and regulatory framework in place to make sure that um, we can actually manage um, uh, this operation. And one thing also needs to be clear is, is that for the beginning at least, we will also have to rely on international experts and, 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 um, and workers who are specially trained uh, as, um, um, you know, especially trained for working on rigs and stuff so that they get work permits and that they can actually come into the country um, to help also to develop our, our um, workforce as well yeah. and to, to ensure that we can also benefit from that better as a society. Dr. Van Dordre, that's all the time we have this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. We're going to take a brief break. We'll be right back shortly.